Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this one titled Duplicaster. It's a blue-red spells deck featuring the infinite combo of Dual Caster Mage plus Quasi Duplicate. Dual Caster Mage, a 3-mana 2-2 Human Wizard introduced in Jumpstart, and it has Flash, so we can play that instant speed. And when Dual Caster Mage enters the battlefield, we can copy target instant or sorcery spell and choose new targets for the copy. Next up we need Quasi Duplicate, a 3-mana sorcery, with the Jumpstart ability, not confusing at all. So we can replay this from the graveyard by discarding a card from our hand, and then we need to exile Quasi Duplicate, and then we get to create a token that's a copy of target creature we control. So the way the combo works is we need a total of 6 mana, preferably a non-dual caster mage creature on the battlefield, as we'll find out in a second, and then access to dual caster mage in our hand and quasi duplicate in our hand or in the graveyard so we can jumpstart it. And then we start off by casting quasi duplicate, copying any creature on our side of the battlefield. Then with quasi duplicate still on the stack, we flash in our dual caster mage, and then it gets to copy target instant or sorcery spell. So we copy quasi duplicate that's still on the stack, and with the copy of Quasi Duplicate, we target our Dual Caster Mage that now entered the battlefield. And then with our copy of Dual Caster Mage, we once again copy the Quasi Duplicate that's still on the stack, which once again will target our Dual Caster Mage. So we get to keep looping this infinitely, making as many 2 2 tokens as we want. And then once we're done making enough 2 2 tokens, we can simply retarget the original creature that's not Dual Caster Mage. And then we will resolve all our quasi duplicates and pass a turn with infinite tutus essentially and a few other copied creatures. Now this is where the problem comes in if we don't have a creature that's different from dual caster mage because quasi duplicate is not a may ability, dual caster mage is not a may ability, so we will be forced to keep copying quasi duplicates and make infinite dual caster mages and we can't really interrupt this combo. So we will be essentially stuck in this infinite loop, and in Paper Magic this would result in a draw, and that's totally legal, that's just part of the rules. In Arena you might time out, I haven't really encountered the situation yet, so maybe we'll find out in today's video. But that's why you typically want to avoid copying your dual caster mage if that's the only creature on the battlefield, otherwise you will get stuck in this infinite loop. But if you have any other non-dual caster mage creature, you'll be totally fine since you can at some point quasi duplicate a different creature and break up the combo. And then with your infinite 2-2 two -two tokens, you'll pass a turn, hope the opponent doesn't have a sweeper or a massacre worm, and then on the following turn you can attack for infinite damage. Now there is another card that's part of this infinite combo that can ensure that we win the game on the very same turn, and that is Rall Storm Conduit for mana planeswalker, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Rall deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So if we manage to pull off the infinite combo of quasi duplicate plus dual caster mage with a Rall Storm Conduit on the battlefield, we can deal one damage to the opponent with each iteration of the loop and win the game on the very same turn. But again, Rall is totally not essential to pull off our combo, but it just makes sure that we don't lose to a sweeper effect on the following turn. And Rall, Quasi Duplicate and Dual Caster Mage are all fine cards in the deck without our infinite combo, which is what makes this deck so powerful and fun to play in my opinion, since we can get good value out of all these cards without needing to combo off. And another important creature in the deck is the Young Pyromancer, another addition from Jumpstart, a 2 mana 2 1 human shaman, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to make a 1 1 red elemental creature token. So that can easily get out of hand in this deck since we have so many cheap instants and sorceries to trigger the Pyromancer. And then our last creature is Dreadhorde Arcanist, a 2 mana 1 3 zombie wizard with trample. And whenever the Arcanist attacks, we can cast an instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost less than or equal to the Arcanist's power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. And then it gets exiled as well. So the Arcanist and the Pyromancer make for a nice team, as we'll get to make a ton of elemental tokens and get a lot of value from the Arcanist. As you'll see, we've got a ton of cheap instants and sorceries that the Arcanist can get back without needing to increase its power at all. And then we also have access to Castle Ambreath in the mana base, which is quite nice with all the tokens from Young Pyromancer. But it can also increase Arcanist's power, so it can get back two drops from the graveyard, including Shard, of course. So those are the core cards in the deck. Let's take a look at all the cheap instants and sorceries. At one mana we've got the full playset of Opt to scry one and draw a card. 
Then we've got the full playset of Pillar of Flame, another new addition from Jumpstart. It's essentially a sorcery speed shock, but if a creature dealt damage this way would die, it gets exiled instead, which can be quite useful against some graveyard decks. And then we also have the full playset of Shock, which we can play at instant speed. And Warlord's Fury, another one mana cantrip that draws a card, and it gives all our creatures first strike until end of turn, which is quite useful alongside Young Pyromancer, as we'll be able to give the Pyromancer first strike as well as all our tokens, so that can set up a favorable attack. And then at two mana, we've got our full playset of Chart of Course, a two mana sorcery, letting us draw two cards, and then we have to discard a card unless we've attacked this turn. So we're totally fine casting this without attacking, as we can maybe discard a quasi duplicate and still jumpstart it later, or maybe discard a land if we're flooding out a little bit. But of course, if we can attack first and draw two cards for two mana, that's great. And then we've got our key two drop creatures with Arcanist and Young Pyromancer. And Young Pyromancer also makes for a great target for our Quasi Duplicate, as just making a bunch of Pyromancers and then making a whole bunch of elemental tokens is a great way to win the game without the infinite combo. And then finally Dual Caster Mage, which is also great alongside all these 1 mana spells, as for 4 mana we can put one of our 1 mana spells on the stack, flash and Dual Caster Mage copying our 1 drop and still get good value without needing a ton of mana. And then our two copies of Ralstorm Conduit, which besides dealing damage when we cast Incense or Sorceries, also lets us scry 2 with the plus 2 ability. And then the minus 2 lets us copy the next instant or Sorcery we cast this turn, which is another way to gain a bit of card advantage. And the roll also just gives us a permanent, that's not a creature that still accumulates a bit of value, so it gives us a bit of insurance against sweepers as well. And then a mana base, we already mentioned Castle Embereth, definitely a key part of this deck. Wish I could play all four copies, but it's a little bit awkward if we draw too many, especially alongside Sulphur Falls. But otherwise we've got five islands, six mountains, and then of course four steam vents and four Sulphur Falls. If you want a few ideas for the sideboard, I've got one built here. Spell Pierce, definitely a key card. I ended up cutting it from the main deck just because it's so atrocious against the goblin decks, which don't have any non-creature spells, but definitely very important against any combo or control deck. I've got a couple on summons, which can be useful at bouncing large creatures that don't die to our burn spells. I've got Blazing Volley, great against the goblin deck too, with a lot of one toughness creatures. And Red Cap Melee, great against any mono red decks. And a bit of Graveyard Hate with Soul Guide Lantern. You could also consider Wizards Lightning, since we have a few wizards here with the Dual Caster Mage and the Dreadhor Arcanist, but we won't be able to get it back with the Arcanist, since it still has converted mana cost of 3. So typically you still want to keep as many cheap instants and sorceries as possible in the sideboard to synergize with the rest of our deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hands. Looking for Arcanist or Young Paramancer here with our opts. Turn one mountain, no play, could be goblins. Which I won't say is a favorable matchup, but it's definitely winnable. We've got a lot of cheap removal for the different lords. And then we've got the infinite combo, which they don't often beat if we can pull it off. And a lot of goblin decks have been cutting goblin chain roller, which is typically quite good against uh, young paramancer, but of course, if they don't have it, that uh, makes it a lot easier. So I can probably afford to untap and use Pillar of Flame instead of Shock, especially if we drew Young Pyromancer, we would have been able to make an extra token first. So we've got both Dual Caster Mage and Quasi Duplicate, just need to try and survive, interact with our opponent, and at some point we might be able to pull off the combo. And I could take the two damage and then next turn go dual caster mage plus shock in the same turn, but I don't want my opponent getting the mana discount from War Chief, so I'll just kill it now. Ah, Fury is totally fine. So we can play Fury, flash in dual caster mage, get a bit of value. Alright, Prospector plus Instigator, so next turn they could have a Muxus if we can kill one of their creatures. What am I doing here? Probably just start with the Charter Course, and I don't mind discarding Quasi Duplicates. Shock is pretty nice. So we can 
attack. And then I'll end up shocking the Prospector and pulling an Arcanist. A Wily Goblin. So next turn I could activate Castle Embereth to get back Charter Course with Arcanist. But um, yeah, if we find another dual caster mage, we can pull off our infinite combo. So what's my plan? Arcanist attack, killing Snoop. And then we'll chart a course and go digging. I should probably keep the dual caster mage back to block. Use Pillar of Flame doesn't really matter. Opponent takes it. Alright, and there's a dual caster mage, so next turn we can pull off the infinite combo. And we've been able to prevent our opponent from casting a Moxus and go totally crazy. Can trade here, doesn't really matter. Alright. So, Quasi Duplicates, Arcanists. Flash and Dual Caster Mage. And let the fireworks happen. And then Arcanist can still attack, getting back a burn spell to finish off the Chieftain to prevent any Cranko shenanigans. Opponents unable to cast Muxus. How many dual caster mages is enough dual caster mages? We'll go with 20, just to be safe. I guess 15 is enough. Attack, get back, shock. And pass a turn. Another chieftain. And our opponent explodes, sweet. So yeah, this is a good example of how we can beat goblins, having the cheap burn spells to take care of the chieftains and the war chiefs, and then uh, eventually assemble the combo, which usually beats the goblin deck unless they've got plenty of Chain Warbers. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Typically I prefer playing Arcanists and then I can play the Pyromancer and get value right away by getting something back with Arcanists. So our opponent having a one mana play I can shock is actually perfect. As that'll set up my Arcanists on turn two. And then next turn we could already make two tokens with the Pyromancer. So opponent appears to be mono-white. Maybe a white weenie deck. I'll say it, so this should be a pretty good matchup for us. A life gain deck. So we'll play Pyromancer. Pillar Flame and Alsade. Make a token, attack. Or flame the vanguard or shock doesn't matter. Make a token, and yeah, opponent packs it in. So small creature decks like mono white life gain, like elves, goblins to an extent. Although that one's a little trickier. Those are all great matchups for shock and pillar of flame alongside pyromancer and arcanist. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Great hands. Turn on Islands and our opponents being a little suspicious, so we might see Spectral Sailor end of turn. I'll keep up Shock just in case. And I think I'm okay letting them untap. If they want to enchant a Sailor, we can Shock in response. 
Otherwise, I might shock it end of turn. It's gonna be Storm Tamer. That's fine. And a Terramander. We'll shock the Storm Tamer for now. Get the Spiromancer in play before they can counter it. And then next turn we've got three spells to enable Pyromancer, which is great. Alright, opponent does move in with the Curious Obsession. They could have a dive down to protect it. Which would be the main concern, as we have double Pillar of Flame and other Shock to potentially respond to a dive down. Another Storm Tamer. Alright, so this should play out beautifully. We even drew another shock. But I'll keep the shock in hand. So our opponent's gonna sacrifice Storm Tamer to protect Terramander. And then I'll Pillar of Flame again. And attack. And then we'll pass with shock and opt available. No need to kill Sailor just yet. They do seem to have some more instants in hand. Chart, of course, perfect draw here. Nice way to refuel. And so is Quasi Duplicates. They might have an unsummon in response, but that's still okay. Mystical Dispute instead, fair enough. So we'll just send in the tokens. Opponent's pretty far from uh, adapting the Termander. Now I let them untap with a Sailor, they could go land for activate Sailor. But if that's the play for their turn, I'm pretty happy. And then next turn we can kind of go off with Quasi Duplicate, maybe on the Pyromancer, maybe just Charter Course to refuel. So yeah, yet another matchup where all these cheap burn spells are just perfect against what our opponent's doing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hands. Hopefully get to shock something turn one. And then we've got our Arcanist and Pyromancer Dream Team. I wouldn't mind finding some blue mana. Mountain probably the worst draw in the deck now. Turn on forest but no play. Next turn we could essentially double shock something even if it uh, doesn't die to the first shock. Sylvan Ranger, interesting. Well, I guess it's still a target. Nah, I guess we can just opt instead now that we found the blue mana. Don't need another dual caster mage at the moment. Get back opt, make a token. And there's quasi duplicate, which maybe I should bottom actually. Still pretty far from the combo, I don't have double blue. Would rather find more cheap spells and interaction. Marwyn. Alright, so our opponent is on an elf deck. Another great matchup. So I can shock Marwyn. Attack with all, shock the ranger. I guess it's arguable I should have opted first and then flashed back the opt with Arcanist to keep shock in the graveyard for later use, but we're pretty likely to find another burn spell between the opts and the charter courses. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is decent except for the double sulfur falls. But if we can pick up any other land that lets these come into play untapped, our hand's great, so I'll try it.
opponent with a turn two Mind Stone, so some sort of black uh, control or ramp deck, which could be a tough matchup, as the Pillar of Flame is not going to be at its best. Yeah, probably still play the Fury here. Could have kept it for next turn to play after we play Pyromancer, but I don't think the Pyromancer is all that likely to win us the game. And the tokens probably get swept up by a Sweeper at some point anyway. Now Pillar of Flame is effective against Solm Simulacrum, as that'll deny them the extra card as we exile it instead. So if our opponent's ramping towards an Ugin, that's going to be tough to beat. Because even if we set up the infinite combo, they can just on the following turn untap and wipe the board again. So this should be an unfavorable matchup. But it's one that could improve after sideboard, as you can imagine, once we bring in Spell Pierce. Opponent just plays a Maze Mind Tomb. Alright, so I think the plan's to attack and chart a course. This is a matchup where I wouldn't mind finding a Raw Storm Conduit to give us a board presence that doesn't die to a sweeper effect. Now let's chart a course again. I could double opt to make an extra token, but maybe I won't get the opportunity to attack with a creature in the near future if they have a board wipe. Alright, Arcanist. Definitely a nice pickup. But let's see what our opponents are ramping towards here. Extinction events, naming even, gets rid of the tokens and the Pyromancer. But at least that's one fewer sweeper we need to worry about. So I think I'm okay playing one fury. And there's quasi duplicate, alright, so next turn I can already go for the infinite combo and force them to have another sweeper. End of turn, can double opts. Karn the Great Creator. Okay. My purpose is greater than myself. What are we getting? Thormod Scripts. Sure. To shut down the Arcanist, I suppose. And a Chromatic Lantern. Alright, so our opponent is playing Golos Lantern. So we'll opt. Could save one opt in hand. I'm not really looking for anything specific. So. I guess we'll attack, force them to sag the thermal scripts. Alright, they let us cast it, so Karn down. Yeah, I guess we go for the combo and then we still have Pyromancer and opt to re-establish a board if they have another sweeper here. Sadly, I can't do this end of turn because Quasi Duplicate is a sorcery. So we'll make like 20 dual caster mages, should be enough. Although it's kind of funny, if my opponent has a Massacre Worm, I could get punished for making too many tokens. I'm okay losing to a Massacre Worm. If our opponent has it, then uh, I'll gladly concede to it.
All right, I guess I'll copy an Arcanist here. This should be enough to kill them under most circumstances. And now I'm not technically dead on board to a Massacre Worm, as I would only be taking 18 damage. All right, they had an Ugin Spirit Dragon. Can minus three. Wipe my board. And then we gotta try and kill this Ugin somehow. I could jumpstart the Quasi Duplicate, but I think Opt needs to find another burn spell here. Alright, well, we can take care of Ugin at least. And then, yeah, I'll play the steam vents and then keep island for jumpstart purposes. But if they have any other expensive card left, we are probably dead. Karn can get any number of expensive cards out of the sideboard. Well, we put up a fight, but Ugin's kind of tough to beat here. Don't even have Castle to pump up my tokens. So we'll make another Pyromancer, but... Next turn I can activate Golos. And that's probably gonna be game over. Might have been worth it to kill Karn and sacrifice a Pyromancer here. Don't think it matters too much. Ritual of Suits clears my tokens, so... Let's see what they hit with Golos. Six mana Ugin. And let's see what Karn can get. I'm kind of curious, so I'm kind of happy I didn't kill it. Mystic Forge, so more card draw. This is typically the part of the game where you would concede, but we'll let our opponent have their fun, see what else they're working with. They've got a lot of removal. So this was gonna be a tough matchup to win with this many sweepers. The only way I can envision winning is if we had a Rallstorm Conduit in play to uh, deal infinite damage while comboing, so sweeper doesn't necessarily save them in that situation. And another Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. Consider the consequences of your freedom. All right, so we're dead to two Ugin activations. Lies beyond vision. Let's see if we can draw a shock to kill ourselves. Ah, just a mountain. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Bit of removal, bit of card draw. Looking for a creature like Young Pyromancer and Arcanist. And Lunar Elves will die here. Uh, I'll shock myself in case I draw an island next turn so I can double opt. Let's 
Sir opponent on an elf deck. And I'll opt right now, I think. Don't need castle. Just looking for a creature. Pillar of Flames, nice to have access to next turn. No need to kill the Visionary, there's more important elves. Shepherd, not a problem at the moment. Could become a problem later. Bottom morale. Alright. I guess we'll kick things off with a Warlord's Fury. Or do I just chart a course here? Maybe a chart a course. And then I can discard a Fury, keep up Shock. And then end of turn I can Shock their most important elf, untap, play Ral, and maybe try and leverage our Planeswalker. We'll see. Take two for now. Fauna Shaman. Fine target for shock. Normally I would want to keep shock in hand to kill one of their lords at instant speed. But uh, the plan was to tap out for all and have it be somewhat protected. I don't think I keep shock when we have double pillar in hand, just looking for young paramancer more than anything. Alright, opponent concedes to Raul Storm Conduits. Guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Multiple combo pieces in case we can get to a late game. Uh, let's just cycle the Fury. This is another Goblin's deck, it is. Not too keen on killing the Wily Goblin. So let's just chart a course, discarding a duplicate. Goblin Chieftain. I can kill with Pillar of Flame. I guess we'll opt first, look for more burn spells, maybe one of our two mana creatures. And there's Pyromancer. And then end of turn we can opt, look for another cheap burn spell perhaps. Krenko is kind of a problem here since it survives two damage. So that's one of the cards that can be kind of tough to deal with at times. A raw storm conduit. Don't think that's what we need. But we are slowly inching towards the infinite combo here. So that's what we're going to try and set up. And hope the opponent doesn't have a goblin chain whirler in the meantime. So let's just Pyromancer. So I need to survive two more turns. Alright, double Prospector, Kranko makes a bunch of goblins. And that's it. So I can even jumpstart a quasi duplicate here. Pass a turn. Opponent will have a lot of goblins. But hopefully they won't have a chieftain to pump them up. Although I guess they do have Castle Ambreth. But I just need to survive one turn here. Luckily my opponent cashed in the Firebrand right away. 
so we don't need to worry about that. So we'll just trade there. If they activate castle, I'm still okay. I guess they can activate castle twice by sacking the other goblins. Does that kill me? Four times three is twelve, so they're still one short. If they attacked with the Prospector, I would have been forced to block with the Pyromancer as well. But yeah, opponent's got a lot of goblins. We'll need to make a lot of uh, dual caster mages here to make sure we can win. So this is one of those rare situations where I might have to make like a hundred of them. Normally 20 dual caster mages is more than enough. But against an active Krenko, that's definitely not the case. All right, our opponent finally concedes. Yeah, we probably would have been forced to make at least 100 dual caster mages to make sure we don't uh, lose to this Krenko, especially if they hit a Moxus next turn and get to go crazy. So one of the rare situations where you actually have to go through it instead of stopping at 20 tokens. So this is one of the things that in Paper Magic, once you've established a loop like this, you can just announce that you're making a million copies but in Arena you have to physically go through it. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this blue-red duplicaster deck. It's definitely one of my favorite playstyles, just casting a whole bunch of cheap instants and sorceries, interacting with the opponent, and playing some good old-fashioned creatures like Young Pyromancer and Red Horde Arcanist. And then we happen to have this combo finish that definitely matters in some matchups, like we saw against Goblins, being able to make infinite tokens is important against an active Krenko and uh, sometimes it's just what we need to close out the game. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.